Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. My name is Joe. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. We'd love to keep you with us and you know exactly how to do that. You've got to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out in future. If this is not your first time here, welcome back. We're glad to see you again. Hopefully the fact that we produce absolutely fucking terrible content has not put you off coming back again. Maybe there's something wrong with you. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Who knows? Today we are here to talk about something that is only absolutely right though in Eldritch. Those big pimping boots are doing wonders for the competitive game at the moment. Of course, we're only able to play online, but what we should be is ready and aware how to either play this deck or play against this deck. This is one of the best control decks that we've seen in quite some time, and I expect that it will continue to be unless it in some way gets it. There's a load of different ways that you can play this, a load of different options, and we're going to cover some of these in today's video. The idea of this is to give you a crash course, a bit of a basic intro on how to go along with this deck. We will not waffle for too much longer though, we will get stuck right into the video for you now. The Eldritch Archetype debuted in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in Secret Slayers, released in April 2020, a set which also introduced two other archetypes, the equally and maybe even more impressive Adamantipator and the fairy Waifu Tax deck Ricca. The word Eldritch is based on a blending of the words of Eldritch, which is something to be considered weird or ghost-like, and a Lich, which in the fantasy genre is usually some sort of undead creature. This undead creature is usually the result of a transformation of powerful magicians or raising the dead, or even sometimes as a result of attempts at immortality. It's also a play on the name of the mythical city of El Dorado, which is often associated with riches and gold, which is seen in the artwork of Eldritch, the Golden Lord, and Golden Land. Eldritch at this time of recording is a fairly new addition to the TCG, and due to the current circumstances surrounding competitive play, we don't have an awful lot of normal competitive play going on. We do, however, have an abundance of online tournaments taking place, which has seen Eldritch looking incredibly strong, and this will likely translate success in the physical side of the game once competitive play resumes. So what is it that's making Eldritch so popular, and how is it played? Well, Eldritch, as an archetype, revolves around the pimping boss monster, Eldritch, the Golden Lord, the shiny dude, with the sassy boots. And it sees its support coming from the Eldlixir and Golden Land cards. The aim of the deck is to get the pimp daddy onto the field with haste, either using his own effect or off the support of other cards themselves. The deck then tends to dominate and control the board, forcing the opposing player into more predictable lines of play and thus stumping their ability to build advantage and mount a comeback. The deck allows a player to summon more zombie monsters and the Golden Land trap slash monsters via the Eldlixir cards, which in turn gain additional benefits when the Golden Lord is on the field, being able to use effects like banishing cards from the graveyard, popping cards in the field, and reducing opposing monsters' attack power right the way down to zero. Some of the Golden Land traps and all of the Eldlixir cards have effects that activate to banish themselves from grave and set each other from the deck to allow them to be used during the following turn. For the next part of this video, we're going to do a rundown of the Eldlich and surrounding support cards to give you an idea of what's available at this moment in time and what options are best to pursue, based mostly on their competitive viability. I'll likely be short on effects to allow the video to run a bit smoother, but all cards will be shown on the screen so you can read the correct text for accuracy. Although you are all Yu-Gi-Oh players, so I know that you're not reading a fucking thing. So we're going to start off with Eldritch the Golden Lord. So you can send Eldritch and one spell or trap from your hand to the grave. And then target a card in the field and send it to the grave. If Eldritch is in your graveyard, you can send a spell or trap you control to the grave to add him back to your hand. And then you can special summon a zombie monster from your hand. And if you do that, it gains a thousand attack and defense until the end of the opponent's turn. And it can't be destroyed by card effects. 
each effect of Eldritch can only be used once per turn. As you can see, Eldritch of its own merit is an already incredibly powerful card, which is one of the most compelling parts of people wanting to build the deck. The in archetype support for this deck only currently contains that single monster to work with, but we will discuss some external support options later in this video. For the next part of this video, we're going to be covering the direct Eldritch support cards, in particular the Eldlixir and Golden Land cards, and how they interact with each other to make this deck as potent as it is. We're going to start off with Eldlixir of Black Awakening. So you can special summon a zombie monster from your hand or your deck in defense position, but if you control no Eldritch monsters, you can only summon Eldritch monsters with this effect. After this effect resolves, you can't special summon except for zombies for the rest of the turn. You can banish this card from the graveyard to set a Golden Land spell or trap from the deck. You can only use one Eldritch here of Black Awakening effect per turn and only once that turn. Next, we have Eldlixir of White Destiny. So you can special summon a zombie monster from your hand or graveyard, but if you control no Eldlich monsters, you can only special summon Eldlich monsters with this effect. After this resolves, you can't special summon monsters other than zombies for the rest of the turn, and then during your main phase, you can banish this card from the grave to set a Golden Land spell or trap from the deck. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. We also have Eldlixir of Scarlet Sanguine. Special summon a zombie from the deck or graveyard, but if you control no Eldritch monsters, you can only special summon Eldritch monsters with this effect. After this resolves, you can only special summon zombies for the rest of the turn. You can banish this card from the graveyard to set a Golden Land spell or trap directly from the deck. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. We also have Eldorado Adelantado. If you control an Eldritch monster, you can activate one of these effects. So you can shuffle three banished Eldlixir spells or traps with different names into your deck, and if you do, blow everything up. Your other option is to shuffle three banished Golden Land spells or traps with different names into your deck, and if you do, you half your opponent's life points and then gain that amount. You can only activate this once per turn. We also have Conquistador of the Golden Land which special summons itself as a light zombie, level 5, 500 attack, 1800 defense, and it's also still treated as a trap. Then if you control an Eldritch the Golden Lord, you can pop a face-up card. During the end phase, you can banish this from the graveyard to send Eldlixir spell or trap from the deck. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. Next up we have Cursed Eldland. You can't declare attacks except for with zombies. You can only use one of the following effects per turn. Pay 800, add one Eldritch monster or one Golden Land spell or trap from the deck to the hand. If this is sent from the spell or trap zone to the graveyard, you can send one Eldritch monster or Golden Land spell or trap from your deck to the grave. We also have Guardian of the Golden Land, which becomes a light zombie level 8 vanilla with 800 attack, 2500 defense. Then if you control Eldritch the Golden Lord, you can make a face-up monster on the field have zero attack. During the end phase, you can banish a card from the graveyard to set an Eldlixir spell or trap from the deck. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. Next up we have Hakero of the Golden Land. It becomes a light zombie level 5 vanilla with 1800 attack and 1500 defense, and then if you control an Eldlich, the Golden Lord, you can banish one card from either player's graveyard. During the end phase, you can set an Eldlixir spell or trap from the deck, and you can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. Following on from that, we have Golden Land Forever. When a spell, trap, or monster effect is activated while you control an Eldritch monster, you can tribute a zombie to negate the activation and destroy that card. You can only activate one Golden Land Forever per turn. Eldlich is quite well rounded, and most of the cards see between two and three copies being played in any given deck, although as different variants come out and the meta shape, some will drop off and others will become more prominent. It's also worth noting at this time that the options for in-archetype choices are quite limited, so most people will opt to play as many as possible to keep the right card names going. The truth is that the Eldritch deck has a relatively small engine overall, meaning there's plenty of room for experimentation. Usually with these videos, I like to discuss common lines of play or basic combos. However, the nature of Eldritch in and of itself means that it doesn't exactly have this. It's all about resource management and knowing how to make the life difficult 
for the opponent. And any combos that do happen tend to depend on what else is in the deck and being used. And if we dive into this, it would be a rabbit hole of potential deck types. I will discuss some variants that are commonly being used and experimented with at the time of recording. But for now, I'll discuss cards that are being used at high levels of play that are complementing a variety of Eldritch based strategies. So first off, we're going to discuss hand traps. This is probably easiest to summarize in this way. Hand traps vary from format to format, and unsurprisingly, given Eldritch is such a small archetype, hand traps mesh well, much like we saw with the likes of Sky Striker and Trickstar. Which of those hand traps you make use of are entirely up to you, what you expect to encounter, and what decks your particular flavor of Eldritch has issues handling. We also have zombies, and it goes without saying that given this deck is based around zombies, having a zombie engine to give you more monster options is a good strategy to employ. Cards like Doom King Baladrock, Mizuki, Gozuki, Glad Bloom, Uni Zombie, and more all tend to love giving this deck another way to play, and it synergizes perfectly. We also have Magician Souls, in for a penny, in for a pound. Magician Souls is no chump change to pick up, but if you're running the Golden Lord, you're probably not shy to picking up whatever the best options are to you. With that in mind, Magician Souls offers a great way to dig into your deck and gives you an easy way to get extra spells and traps into the grave to abuse their graveyard effects. I'd also like to discuss Tuners. I put this under one generic category because the options vary hugely again. We've seen variants using lefty and righty driver, mecha phantom beast o-line, jet synchron and others as a means to enable needle fiber plays and give them a greater presence based around comboing through these options and having a more resilient first turn play to control the game state. If you are interested in a Halka Fibrax or Needle Fiber, depending on which one you know it as, if you're looking for one of those lines of play that is based off Jet Synchron plus one discard that ends on three draws, a Borrowed Savage and a Hyper Librarian, you can check that out and I will pop that link on screen for you at the moment. So you can go ahead and click that and check it out. We also have Pot of Extravagance. The deck doesn't necessarily rely on the extra deck in the same way most other meta decks do, depending on which variant you're running. So banishing random utility cards from the extra deck isn't usually a huge risk, especially with how much value an extra two potential cards can offer you in exchange. And lastly, we have Floodgates. Love them or hate them, they are here to stay. Floodgates can offer you a variety of ways to lock out the opponent and force them to waste resources. Decks that rely on just a few monsters, most of which are in the same attribute or type, are usually primed for being loaded up with floodgates. See True Draco and other zombie builds, and Eldlich is no exception to this. Eldlich, at the time of recording, has seen a good amount of experimentation, but there's still some time that the deck needs to refine and mature into the TCG. The current more prominent Eldlich builds are Pure Eldlich. Does what it says on the tin, it revolves around Eldlich and the in-archetype support. We also have Invoked Eldlich, which offers a higher ceiling, allowing you more ways to play against whatever the opponent is playing, and gives the extra deck greater utility to handle a variety of different decks. This currently appears to be the strongest variant. We also have Zombie Eldlich, which is pretty self-explanatory too. Zombies, of course, have great synergy with the Eldritch cards, giving you a greater variety of options and bigger combo potential in exchange for some consistency. Doom King, Baladrock and Pals are nothing to take lightly. And lastly, we have Eldritch Synchro. This build revolves around the biggest combo potential, giving you lots of options to gain ground from turboing through a variety of Synchro plays. And welcome back. That is it for the video, I'm afraid. Hopefully, this has given you a really good taster of how the deck works so that you can be prepped to either pick this up yourself or to play against it. You're not going to get caught off guard. You're going to have some basic idea of what all the cards do. And of course, you're welcome to reference this at any point you like. If you would like to see more of this content, you should definitely let me know. I have plenty of ways to be gotten hold of. All the social media in the world, Facebook particularly, I'm quite active on. Or, of course, you can leave it down in the comments. Thank you very much for checking in, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you in the next one.